What is that? That's not for you to open! Ouch! Michael, this is from Steve Dennis. Yeah, get off of it. So, Steve Dennis, Mike. Oh God, you're gonna get time out, Michael. Stop it! Steve Dennis sent us a package. Michael, do you see? Michael, do you see? Oh, Michael. No, no. You know what, Bang? I'm gonna let you do something different. Use your knife. Not for me. No, Mike, you should give me this goddamn thing. So, Steve Dennis decided to send us a package, Mike, for you. You've been learning very well with your edible crackers. I don't use your knife, Mike. God damn it! There we go, Mike. It cuts through like butter. There. No, no, I will give that the back, Mike. I know where your last castle left you. Now, we will see what it is, Mike. Oh, Mike. Eat. My guy's a lot of rage to work out. He couldn't beat that most Super Bowl today. What is that, Mike? Well, we fucked this shit up. So it says, Michael, if you're red, stop, no knife, fragile, goddamn you, Michael. Put down the mic! Knife! Okay. Sorry about that, Steve! Michael is learning how to learn with Ginsu knives. Anyway, I don't think anything was damaged. Let's see what we have, Mike. This is for Michael. Michael, you have the present. It's not from Jamie Lee. Michael, you gotta work your aggression out another way. I don't wanna smell it! Get your mind focused. Open the goddamn present! What is it, Mike? Release your demons, Michael. We have to work through a process with Michael as he opens up the goddamn plastic paper wrap that's taking him 10 years to do! Smells like candy corn. It's perfectly normal. That hurt my fucking nose. Oh, Mike. Look at this, Mike. A new mask. It may get him over his sensation with white blank masks based on strangely William Shatner. No, Michael, don't wear that. No. You look like a hippie from Woodstock 78. Mike. So, moving on. Oh, this is for me and Michael. Read this to me. Say it out loud. What does it say? Fans and Michael, Dr. Lewis. So, show it off, Michael. Show it off for the people to see. Lovely hair! Looks like one of your first victims! You look like a leftover from James and the Giant Peach! Take it off, Michael! Jesus Christ! You look like a Reese Cup commercial that got banned in Japan! So I'm opening up 
have to get for me, Dr. Lu. Why are you sending this? I'm busy, you know. But I will do this for you. Like Your hair makes me think of white snake. Here I go, again, on my own. Don't do that. Mike, stop, I have a knife. Okay. Don't touch me. Jesus Christ, it's like watching Iggy Pop try to eat a pop top! Oh, it's a coffee mug for my Asian tea? Not being 
able to send a supply of goddamn Asian tea along with it. It's very hard to find. You have to go through Amazon and a backlist. Possibly get off the dark web. We don't want you to do this. I make my own Asian tea. Apples. And Michael, that's what he's saying to you, Michael. I hope you like your throwback mask. Hope it brings you joy and fond memories of paper mache class back at Smith's Grove. Yes, Michael, you failed. You failed, Michael. But you did good, I guess, uh, tips. Why well, you used to make masks just like this one. You remember that mask, Michael? Michael's in deep thought. Thinking about Marky Mark and the funky bunch which he just came from exercising to. No! Now, Michael, listen. Just because you have this mask again does not mean you can escape again. Dr. Lewis will shoot you six times. I will! I might pump it up to eight times, Chef. You stay your ass in Smith's Grove. We're actually at a letting home. It's outside of Smith's Grove. It's kind of related. But if you run, I will shoot you in the butthole. And here's some goldfish to help with the ranch, Michael. Goldfish does help with your ranch. Why does he do this? I've also included a few questions for the both of you, if you don't mind answering them in the video. Which I don't know who fucking films this shit. Who does it on, Michael? Who does the camera on? I believe it's that goddamn Bob Feeler. Get off of it, Michael. Dr. Lobos, unfortunately, you'll have to answer Michael's questions because he won't say anything. He won't. He won't say a goddamn thing. Even when I say that Jason Voorhees wants to overtake him. Mike, you are so close to timeout. Questions. Eat your goddamn goldfish. Questions for Dr. Lobos and Michael. Number one, Dr. Lomas. You have an issue, Michael. What is Michael's actual diagnosis? <clears throat> Tastes like shit! Michael's actual diagnosis is he is suffering from what we like to call piece of shititis. Killing your sister and not realizing that you have done it? Schizophrenic, paranoia. And overall, look, you are fucked. His actual diagnosis is in process. Mike, question for you, number two. Is My Little Pony still your favorite show? Absolutely. And he's moved on and graduated to Golden Girls. Rerun. Loving it. Dr. Lobos, can you and Michael watch all the Halloween trailers? Michael, get your ass back here. Trailers together as you did with Friday the 13th for us. You know, we will. We will. We'll get. We will get there eventually. Michael, turn your ass around and eat your goldfish. They'll get stale. Michael runs away. Okay, again, running away from responsibility. That's what Michael does. Oh, Michael, I don't know if you want to answer this, but you can. Michael, are you a virgin? He's never tasted the virginal flesh from the temple of vagina. That's why he is mad. He says, JK, Mike, calm down, eat some goldfish. Eat some goldfish. Number five, Dr. Lopez. Why hasn't Michael gotten us a movie like... I hope you die, Michael. Why hasn't Michael gotten a versus movie like Freddy and Jason? He doesn't want to play with anybody else! He wants to play with his wanky and Smith Grove! 
He won't come out inside and play. And he wants to snort goldfish. That's the only question at the end, Mike. As far as for Dr. Lomas and Michael Myers. The other ones for these piece of shit Mike and Jay that make YouTube videos based on our exploits, Michael. They make money off our shit! Yes, Michael, you keep that up. So, thank you for the package. I will definitely enjoy this goddamn Asian tea out of the goddamn Asian tea mug. Michael will continue eating goldfish and not having women. No more. You've ruined my pantsuit. Stop. Thank you, Steve. You are a great, great man. And good luck to you in the future. Do not come to Smith's Grove because I will therapeuse your ass to oblivion. Have a good one. Mike, get away from me. <sighs> Alright. Hey! So, hi! Welcome back. It's a great party. We're okay. Mike humped my leg off camera. <laughs> I did. Literally. I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, thank you, Ooh, Steve, man. Dude, uh, that mask is fucking. That is fucking great. Um, I couldn't say it. I couldn't, I couldn't say it in, in the Dr. Loomis. I wanted it's to say. Fucking awesome. Fuck you! Girl! I couldn't say it because if I said it like that, Dr. Loomis would never say it. He would. I mean, what I wanted to do was. Catch Dude, on I'm fire. so glad that when we were stabbing that box and shit, we I, know. Right, I had no idea. Like, it was so funny. It like, was in a Mr. Coffee box. Like, we had no idea. Like, we stabbed right in and literally, literally, it said this, stop, no knife. Like, <laughs> it was so he fucked He knows. Up. The guy in 2B, he knows. Get him and rape him. Uh, so, okay, so, uh, thank you so much. You know, oh. hey man, I love that you, you, awesome, you're man. liking the whole, um, you actually went the, so cool. You went the full Monty and wrote to Dr. Loomis and Michael. Well, I wish that Michael could actually answer. Me too, it's really hard to respond. Yeah, I'm within. I know. I was just looking at your Iggy Pop makeup. Yeah, I'm in a band. Can and not know? not just that, but the worst part is, is that I have a fresh tattoo, and you kept fucking hitting it the entire oh, time. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fucking. Was part. that in between you trying to hump my fucking leg? That was afterwards. Shit. Oh, okay, <laughs> just making sure. That was okay. Anger so, uh, Mike <laughs> J. Anger. So this is the uh, your actual letter to us, uh, guys. Thanks so much for all you do. Hope you guys like the gifts. I know it's not much, and the mask is cheap as fuck. Only costs about, fifteen on Amazon. That's so fucking cool. You don't have to tell us at all. I yeah. I don't have fifteen dollars. Yeah, it costs fifteen cents. I'm there. Uh, can I come over to your house for gravy? Uh, <laughs> but I want to do something for you. And honestly, my thoughts on the mask are: Michael made it out of paper mache in his hospital room, so it really is supposed to look great. Question mark. No. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on that. Love you guys. Thanks again, Steve. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. It, actually, the, to be honest with you, the way that they designed the mask, it looks really fucking good. Yeah, dude, and um, I'm, dude, it smells like candy. It does. And normally, these masks smell like corn. They smell like used rubbers. This thing smells like delicious candy. Yeah, man. But don't don't ever. You don't have to say that again. Like, uh, as far as like, you guys can send us the cheapest shit. You can send us something that you got off the vending machine if you want, and have us react to it. Uh, I feel like I just want to be Danny Trejo and be like, I was good to you, Mikey! <laughs> you look like you should be in the Smashing Mikey, Pumpkins. Mikey, I was good to you! You should be in the Smashing Pumpkins revival. Uh, but yeah, either way, that mask is cool, man. We'll, I'll do we'll, that to yeah, we'll own it. That's yeah, badass. We'll, uh, we'll definitely use it, maybe, hopefully, in, in a, a future skit. But either way, if we don't, we'll have it in the back wall at some point. Um, that's really, really sweet of you, man. Like and Again, you guys don't have to send us anything. And, and especially if you do send us something... Do not worry ever about what it costs or how much you gave. It doesn't make a fucking bit of difference. No, we're just happy to hear If you gave that letter, it would be enough. And if you asked us to do the letter in Dr. Loomis, Michael thing, we would do it anyway. Um, so Speaking of which, we have two letters here um, okay. from Nick. I'll give you one. I'll take one. There well. Okay, okay. Okay, and he also says you can say Paul's name. Uh, he's a fan, too. Okay, Paul. Paul! Paul Bunyan. Paul! So, dear Mike and Jay, Jay and Mike, I like the second better. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hi y'all, my name's Nick, or since I consider you guys my friends, you can call me uh, Nico. Like fucking Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal Nico. Yeah. Badass, yeah. we're gonna call you Nico. Can you fucking fuck you all? I was, I was gonna say, can you kill someone with your hands? If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't have had the balls to keep watching horror movies. It was the summer of 2013, and I watched Rob Zombie's Halloween. Got them. 
Yeah, uh, after, <laughs> after I watched it, I turned to my friend Paul and was like, it wasn't that scary. Mind you, I was terrified of horror movies as a kid. Now I'm like, fuck me up, man. Ja, ja, ja. <laughs> uh, he says, I'm like, fuck me up, man. Quotations. Yeah, man, you gotta get on that shit. Fuck me up. Ja, ja, ja. Anyway, I made a <laughs> quiz for you guys to know your opinions on things. But I also want to say thank you for all the memories that I still laugh my ass off. My junior year was shit. It was like God or someday somebody was uh, like, oh, you seem happy, fuck you. But the light that shined through the storm was you guys. I graduated high school, now you are now, but thanks you both, Mike and Jay. You're welcome, man. Yeah, that's amazing. You get that degree. Um, junior year sucks, man. High school sucks. It does. It's like the worst fucking time. It's like, can I buy alcohol legally? Yes, you can. But do I go to jail? Yes, you can. Um, yeah, you can do that in senior year. Can't, you can't yeah. buy alcohol legally. And you get, I said, you your, I, no, you can't. Sometimes you get your ass kicked. Not unless you're in Europe. People don't like it. Um, I feel your pain. So, um, you guys you to read? Well, I'm getting the fucking point I left off. Mm. You guys made me or helped me realize that I do have quirks, but I'm fucking badass. Yeah, you are. Sure, I love anime, video games, horror movies, and working out slash weightlifting, but who cares? That sounds like an awesome mix. I don't know why you Fuck think yeah. that's a bad thing, man. You're going to be fucking stacked and ready to fucking attack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I realize I'm an awesome person no matter what, so thank you both. Funny enough, on vacation with my family a couple of years ago, I think we drove past your old house, Mike. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm not a weird fan, but I was like... <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not a weird fan, but I was like, quote, what? Wait the fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I know, this letter, so, you, he may have drove by your old house. Weird. You should have stopped it and be like, I have a mulatte for you. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, oh, and I know the letter is a little long. Hope you guys will keep making more content. I can't do the Patreon thing yet, but I don't know if I'm breaking the rules. No, man. You, you, like, you guys, don't have to, you don't have to do any of that stuff. At uh, all. But if it's okay, it would be amazing if you guys could review Suspiria or Dawn of the Dead 1974 or Salem's Lot. Actually, the last two, um, they're definitely on the timetable for us to do. Uh, we've talked about that off camera a few times, so we'll get to that eventually. And I'm sure we'll review Suspiria before yeah, the remake comes yeah. out, too. So uh, yeah. Now, I know that you guys reviewed the original Dawn of the Dead. Did we? I guess we did. Yeah. Long time ago. Uh, but I would love to see what you guys think of it now. Anyways, thank you all for everything you guys did for me, and hope you guys have a nice day. Thanks, Nick. I said, God damn it! Man, that's a, that's a very sweet letter, man. And, you know, yeah, I'm glad that you, you, you said fuck it. You said fuck it, I'll be who I am, and I'm going to go about my business the way that I am. Because that's what me and Mike did. Like, we, uh, go, you know, going up from high school into what we are now in our uh, early 20s, <laughs> I wish. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty much the same way. We're, uh, we're like, we don't give a fuck how people judge us. We, we do our own thing. We, we kind of march our own tune. And uh, everything else is gravy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everything's going to fall in place for you eventually. So don't don't sacrifice yourself or try to be something you're not. Just be who you are and go with the flow. I got to tell you, man, regardless, the goldfish were delicious. So um, he liked regardless of me he, eating goldfish while listening to your head. letter, I want you to know, honestly, like that letter touched me. Like that's school, like junior year, like Pretty much any time in life can really suck if you're in the wrong conditions, man. And it, and it's really hard to get accepted in this world for who you are. Uh, everybody has mm. visions of who you're supposed to be, who your parents think you're supposed to be, who the kids in school or coworkers think you're supposed to be. And to hear you say that we helped you figure out it was okay to be yourself is like, man, that's the coolest thing. Like, it's just the coolest thing. Like, it's a really hard thing to do. And... Uh, thank you, man. I just appreciate the hell out of that. Like, thank you. It's really nice, man. Genuinely, deep down, thank you. Um, his quiz uh, says, uh, quiz, not of all time, just within the uh, the last, I can't say, I've, I've, I got rubber sweat on my face. Uh, uh, not of all time, just within the, the uh, I'm not uh, sure. I, yeah. uh, number one, favorite class horror characters, um, A, Chucky. B, the, the tall, tall man. man. C, Pumpkinhead, or D, Ghostface. Well, that's just the he has the big three, but uh, out of the ones you have, I think he's saying like whatever is on the left, don't include the big three. So out of those, okay. Four, so just out, out yeah. of these three, what's your, fa uh, your favorite? <clears throat> Honestly, uh, ooh shit, I like um, 
I'm gonna have to go with Ghostface, but at the same time, I think Pumpkinhead's fucking badass. Like, dude, out of that four, Pumpkinhead rocks the shit out of my socks I'm every gonna, night. I'm gonna go Ghostface just because Spinity. I mean, you can't. Craven, I mean, West Craven. Yeah. I mean, you can't go. So but, much personality yeah. in there. Uh, number two, favorite uh, super hatch, supernatural uh, horror movie. Uh, a, The Conjuring, uh, B, Poltergeist, C, The Exorcist, uh, D, Insidious, uh, fuck Darth Maul. Yeah, That's fuck it. him. He got killed by Obi-Wan. And be... Obi-Wan was early on in his career as a Jedi. The Exorcist, man. The Exorcist is a scary movie. Favorite, scary but movie but no, I mean, favorite Supernatural, though. Is it your favorite? I mean, it's scariest. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, yeah, The Exorcist is a great... I would say, uh, as far as story and, and how much I enjoyed myself watching it, Insidious. I really got into... I, I dug the fuck out of the story. Like, the other three are great. I love them, and, and for all different reasons. But Insidious, it, it came along when it was needed. Like, it was something That's that true. really needed to happen. That's true. So. I still go with the extras. But, yeah, yeah. I don't get fucked uh, Favorite scene movie. Uh, it, Needful Things, The Mist, or Carrie. I'm, dude, I'm going to say, um, Ooh. I'm going to say The Mist. Like, oh, I, I just, I enjoyed so much. I, I felt, I, it was funny because uh, we had these storms knock out our power for a week and, and all these trees and shit. And I, all I kept thinking was... Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be like Thomas Jane, and I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to uh, saw up trees, and then I'm going to help my neighbor, and we're going to go to the store, but then a mist is going to roll, and it's going to kill everybody, and then I'm going to kill myself and my son that I don't have. Or you're going to, like, bang on the door as the mist rolls in and realize that there's nobody available, and your, your family's gone, but then you're thinking at the same time, you're like, oh, they just went out for fucking KFC. <laughs> uh, my favorite out of those four, uh, I'm not going to pick the mist. I would have, but I'm honest, uh, needful things, man. Uh, Needful Things with Ed Harris, I fucking loved it. Uh, it. It definitely deserves a remake. I think it deserves a big budget treatment. But it was a great ass movie. The concept of it's badass. Like a guy, uh, the devil literally moves into a small town and is offering anything and everything for people. A uh, great. Uh, top five John Carpenter movies. Mm. I mean, Halloween. Obviously, Halloween. Uh, the Thing. Uh, uh, Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, oh jeez, I know I'm gonna miss a big Blame one it. here. Bling it, bling it, I'm gonna miss a huge one here. Like I know I'm gonna miss a huge one here. Uh, you know what? I, I, a movie that I liked a lot. I can't think top five directly over my head. I thought The Ward was underrated as fuck. By the way, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but whew, Assault from PC 13. They live. They live. Uh, Amazing movie number. Yeah, four. Um, and. Dude, I know I'm missing something huge here, and I'm going to hate myself in life for it later. I hope you hate yourself, too. Oh, man. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough fucking question, dude. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to put on the spot, I mean, for sure, because it's like you got to go through a checklist in your brain. It's like a fucking spreadsheet, and you're like, damn. Oh, damn. I'm going to get fired. Sean fucking Carpenter, man. Ghost from Mars, just for fun. That's a badass movie. Just for fun. Though. I'm going to go with um, Halloween, uh, 78. Close second favorite, Big Trouble in Little China, John Carpenter. I forgot about that. That's yeah, what I forgot about. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Uh, they Good Live, job. number three. Number four, The Thing. And number five, as far as a John Carpenter movie, Escape from... I like New York a lot, but L.A. I love Escape from L.A. I, don't, I know it's corny as fuck, but something about having Bruce Campbell in Escape from L.A. made it all the better in the set. Kurt Russell. You said Bruce Campbell. No, Bruce Campbell was in Escape from L.A. Oh, you just mean him being in it? No, he was in it, like, as a plastic surgeon. Oh, uh, <laughs> this scares with me. Yeah, no, I um, know it is. Who would win in a fight? Oh, this is a great question. James Bond, Jason Bourne. This is go. We've talked about this. Forever. I've got this one ready to go. It depends it, on the James Bond. It, well, it depends on if they're up close or far away. From far away, from far away, I'm going to give that to James Bond because of, of all the smoothness, because of the technique, because of his backing. Jason Bourne has no backing. He's just making shit out of microwaves. Well, he does. Hand-to-hand has... -hand combat, though... Jason Bourne wins unless he's facing specifically Daniel Craig James Bond, in which case it's a draw. I'm gonna go with James Bond overall because I'm I'm gonna go with the most recent James Bond, which is Daniel Craig. And now that he's got Q, Jason Bourne's fucked. <laughs> like Jason Bourne does like you said, he doesn't have the back he's got Q now, and Daniel Craig's already badass martial arts like parkour shit, he'll kill Jason Bourne. Who would you want to be in a, a post-apocalyptic world? Form a team of two people. Pick two of these people. A. Ratty Ripper Piper from They Live. B. Emily Blunt, Edge of Tomorrow. C. Jason Bourne. D. Bruce Lee. E. Jason Voorhees. F. Nathan Drake. Easily, right now, I'm going to tell you I'm going to go with Emily Blunt and I'm going to go with Bruce Lee. And the reason I'm going to do that is because Emily Blunt's one of the most badass chicks from Edge of Tomorrow, especially. Mm. One of those badass, ridiculous badass chicks. And Bruce Lee has the, the not only the talent, but the an iron will to see his way through anything. I would follow that man through me, and that's an easy choice for me.
I'm gonna go with Rowdy Piper <laughs> from They Live because it's Rowdy Piper and the fact that he fought Louis Gossett Jr. for like 15 fucking minutes in an alleyway to convince him to wear sunglasses. He He's that. got drive. Yeah. And the second one, I'm gonna go with Crazy here. His partner would be fucking Jason Voorhees. As long as you don't get him near goddamn water, he's, he's uncontrollable. Him. How would you pick him in a post where he would slash your ass? Because it's Rowdy Rowdy Piper. He's got bagpipes and shit. He might, Jason would love it. You send him in a direction, it's fucked. It's a fun answer, but it's Freddy. fucking terrible. Like, no, no, no. Freddy Practically, it. it makes no sense. No, Freddy did it. Jesus. He, he, he pointed Jason like a rocket. Number six, where do you want um, the um, or Insidious or Conjuring franchise to go? Uh, Insidious, man, I don't, Jesus Christ, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, yeah. like just make up shit. Like, there's no f really super cool, fun place for it to go except for just, they're doing a great job with just making up shit as they go. And the Conjuring franchise, I think they just need to pick another classic story and follow with it. But leave the, the Warrens out of it this time. Like, just leave them out of it, because it's been found that they're full of shit on multiple occasions anyway. So. Well, I, I think that Insidious, it could go either uh, one or two ways. I mean, it could die the way that it is, because it's already kind of told the prequel. You got Shay Lynn and her backstory and, and things like that, and it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, but at the same time, like, how much further you gonna, you want to push that, the backstory? I mean, are you going to go into sequel territory? Shay Lynn's dead if you go to sequel. And she's one of the best parts of the, of the movie now. Uh... But you could go with the ghost hunter, like the two guys that are left over, but at the same time, are, then at that point, are you making it more of a, a, a comedy kind of horror movie? The Conjuring, even though I agree with you about the Warrens, the Warrens, a lot of their case files come from the Warrens. So anything from the Conjuring that come out, Conjuring 3, Conjuring 4, is going to be plucked from what the Warrens actually investigated, because there's a lot more stories that the Warrens fucked with. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want them to keep going, but Insidious is one of those films that I'm kind of like, you're kind of you're kind of on borrowed time a little bit with Insidious. I get that. Last question: What makes an iconic horror character iconic to you guys? I ask because I'm trying to create an iconic horror, horror character to make the big three, a big four, and change the horror genre. Fuck yeah, man, do it. Get that um, haunt in there. I think that the iconic, what, what makes a, a horror villain iconic is, um, I mean, you could say the mask, you could say the suit, you could say the setting, which they all help. I mean, they definitely help as far as icon uh, status. Uh, are they unique? Is there is there something different that drives them outside the other three? or, or well, we'll say the big three. Is there something outside of the big three that drives them? And also... Um, is the story unique? Is the story original? Is there something that you're bar? You know, honestly, um, Scream was close to it because they borrowed from all these different horror elements and made something iconic with the ghost face mask. Because we'd all seen that growing up, this ghost face kind of mask and not really cared about it. And then uh, Wes Craven comes along and makes it relevant. Um, but yeah, the mask, the suit, the story, uh, the setting, and and uh, I think just really the the, uh, the the characters that you have around it. Because what makes Michael Myers Michael Myers, I mean, Michael Myers is iconic for a reason. He's iconic because not only was it great writing that told the story of Michael Myers, but the people around him that fueled the legend of Michael Myers. Thank you so much for watching, and we love your fucking face. And if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some fucking wham up in you. I did that backwards, see what I did there? I don't give a shit, Jay. Fuck it. Mike is God's complete Riddler. I knew it from the moment I saw him with a question mark on his fucking dick. We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie. We watched it. We watched a movie. Yeah. You know what? We did review. We watched a movie. Uh-huh. We watched a movie.